Hello. Hi guys. Am I here? Am I with you? Where'd my comments go? Put my comments back so I can see if you're there. Say hello if you can see me. Tell me if you're on Facebook and you can see me. Tell me if you're on YouTube and you can see me. Can you see me? It's been a long time since I've done this. And I can't remember how that much. <clears throat> oh, good. Somebody's saying hello. Hi, Steve. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to assume this is all happening. Yes, hello, people. Hi, Ellen. Uh, <clears throat> hi. We're still doing this. It's almost two years since uh, the first time I did this, and I don't feel like I'm all that much better at it, but here's the thing that I was thinking about as I was setting up for this is that I don't really want to be that good at this. I'm excited to do it. I'm very grateful to see you guys all in my little screen here and thank God we have this, especially the times when we really, really, really needed it. Um, but I guess there's people that when this whole thing started, like became really good at live streaming and I salute those people and I, but I choose to not be them. <laughs> I choose to have it be this. Us making it up in some weird little computer screen boxes. Okay. I'm so happy you're here. And um, we are going to play this album. I have it right here. I should have gotten the big version, but I didn't. Here it is. Um, Blood Test, which came out in 2014, and I made it in 2013. Um, which is simultaneously a moment ago and several lifetimes ago um and this is the beautiful art by ben Tuesley, i think or ben towsley a funny thing about working with people over the internet is that you don't know how to pronounce their name anyway he made really beautiful art i have the lyrics here uh in case i need them i don't think i will these very pretty pictures are by Joanna Chapman. She has, she's so beautiful and she has incredibly nice clothes. And as soon as she saw me, when I walked up to her photo shoot, she was basically like, you're going to have to wear my clothes. <laughs> so I did. <clears throat> Thank you everyone for the encouragement. I see that you're there. I don't want to be that good at it is I don't really want this to be how our life is I want to get back to the thing where you guys are in the room and so am I so it's a little form of resistance to reality it's healthy uh okay <clears throat> should we start are these candles making you nervous I'm not gonna I don't think burn my house down I was just trying to get the vibe in here if you were actually in the room the vibe is pretty good but then the lights look bad on the computer because that's what they do what happens? Do we just play songs? I think so. Remember how it used to be? Nothing on the radio, nothing on TV. Just us and all those hours. The humming road, the singing stars. We could listen in, we could drown it out. We could listen in, we could drown. Trade the darkness for a screen 
Um, now it's your job to tell me if anything sounds weird or too quiet or too loud or too, or if it's breaking up or if anything's bad. Tell me all the bad things right now so we can fix them and get on with our life. <coughs> mm. It's nice to sing that song. I never sing it very often. I don't know why. Um, that was the very first song that I wrote to a prompt in my little... Um, songwriting group situation where we write a song a week and I didn't think I could do it and I definitely did not think that any songs would come from it that I would want to you know keep and play for people and um that was the first one and then it ended up being <laughs> the title track to the album so that's funny uh the version that I wrote initially was very different it was slow and quiet and totally different I know the picture's bad that we know that already, and that's I won't bore you with the details of why that has to happen, but we have a choice, which is it can look good or it can sound good, and the choice is clear. So yeah, it's gonna look like that the whole the whole time. That's just what it is. It's just gonna make it all the sweeter when we're actually just doing this in real time and space. Okay. Great. Seems like everything is, uh, <laughs> seems like everything's good. We'll go forward. <clears throat> um, Homeless is the second song in this album. That's crazy. Whose idea is that? That's insane. This is funny because I now end a show with this song so often that doing it early on is, seems just bananas, but that's what we decided to do back in the olden days. <clears throat> uh, let's see, but it's not in this key at all, is it? We had a funny thing for dinner, which was cheese fondue, uh, because the reason why we did is that we just found out today that we have a fondue pot that um, was a wedding present uh, 17 and a half years ago. <laughs> we never used it, so we felt like we needed to use it immediately and so we just had a big bucket of cheese with stuff dunked in it i'm pretty sure i'm not like a trained singer or anything but i'm pretty sure that's exactly what you do not want to eat right before you sing but i think we're going to be fine i think the spiritual benefit will override any kind of physical <coughs> Anyway, here's Homeless. I don't even remember writing this one, you guys. I really don't. It is a funny, um, it's like it's just always been here. and the sea Who you're supposed to be When the face is on the page The face is on the mirror Look the same The cradle and the crutch supposed to hurt this much when the highways turn around Yeah. 
years roll along And sorrow turns to song And your tears fill like rain And it streams into rivers That at last find their path to the sea you're holy do you know that I love you do you know that above you is blue is blue <clears throat> it's just a song about being a person, basically. <clears throat> hmm. No, thank you for your thank you for your audio comments. Hold on. Let me see if I can do something about that. I'm gonna turn down a little. I know that um. There was some clicking and popping when I was testing it before. I don't know why. I don't know why, guys. Hopefully. It's charming. <laughs> oh. I'm going to have to read everything you guys are saying later because it's too hard. But thank you for the um, tech input. Anytime you guys are noticing anything weird, please do tell me because I can't tell. And there's nobody else on it. Yeah, there's stream glitches for sure. <clears throat> I do live in the woods, it's true. I live in the boonies. I have... Uh, an incredibly long ethernet cable that I have to hook up to a distant location. <laughs> but uh, still tonight there's something strange. It's all right. We're in the woods. That's what happens. Um, next is 92nd Street. Which is um, a song that I, to me, this will always be a very special song, partly because it's the first one that I wrote uh, after a year and a half of not writing anything when I had my kid. And um, I wrote it when I was, uh, 
had a gig in somewhere in upstate New York. I was going to play radio on a college radio station. It was nighttime. It was snowing. I was late, and I was trying to get to this radio gig, and I couldn't find the building. And um, after not writing any songs or having any ideas for over a year and a half, that was the moment that uh, all of a sudden something popped into my head. So now I'm trying to find the building and not drive off the road in the snow. And I'm trying to get my phone set up to record this song idea that is coming out of my head. And um, it was just a couple lines of this song and it turned into this song which is about, to me, being a teenager in New York growing up and uh, I was going to music school at the time um, uh, studying cello. And piano and so I was going to music music school on the weekends and uh, it's just about that time trying to figure out love trying to figure out music and uh, improvisation so it turned into this up on 92nd Street <clears throat> there's the second line and then there's the whole rest of the song too it's kind of like it's not about here luckily usually I would just play that note until I remembered the words but luckily they're right here <clears throat> never have fondue before your show guys oh yeah I got the whole thing Up on 92nd Street, one of seven million faces, maps inside your jacket sleeve, keys to all the secret places. sound of my heart calling, calling, lying in your room all day, jazz tea and dirty movies listening to monk and train play a little naima through me through me you said there ain't no real mistakes said
singing all the way to bleak sweetest sounds I ever coming through a broken speak <clears throat> Thanks, guys. <clears throat> hmm. What's next? It's nice. One thing nice about these um, shows is that it's. Your set list is completely written for you, which I have to say is incredibly relaxing. Next is gonna be Saw It All. Uh, I started writing this on the airplane. off out of Atlanta. It started, I was just looking down at uh, all these developments and all the, just all these little cookie cutter houses and everyone had a little pool and a little, you know, chem lawn and um, I was just thinking about all the food that could be grown on that land <laughs> and um, because I'm a farmer and then uh, that then it continued to get more sort of existential and cosmic from there and I was just thinking about the patterns of life and land <clears throat> and then it just kept getting uh, more and more out there I remember we had two versions of this um, and this was at, a sort of little fight between me and Anders Parker who um, produced this with me and played guitar <clears throat> and I think that the one went on the record was the one that I liked better but now I'm curious to listen to the one that he liked better because probably it's gonna turn out to be cooler <clears throat> but it's too late sky warning I saw the new day dawning I saw the big bird lifting I saw the slow world shifting and I went high I saw it all and I went high I saw it I saw the braided veins of rivers I saw the burdens they deliver I 
saw all the silent neighbors I saw the fields cry out for labor I saw the sky all unfurled I saw the warm green skin of the weary world I saw the big machines with the claws all curled Yeah, digging, dragging, digging And I went high I saw it all And I went saw the sinking skies and I saw the great First time I played that song um, in person was in uh, at the High Noon in Madison, Wisconsin, and um, <clears throat> a friend of mine uh, had never heard it, and he I could see him. It's a funny, it's a club. I don't, most of you have probably never been there, but it's got like a um, balcony, and every time I play there, it reminds me of the club in. Um, Purple Rain. I feel like I'm playing in Purple Rain uh, when there's like all the weird sort of like all the like punked out gothy people all up in that balcony. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, I could see all the way in the back of the club, backlit by the like coming in the doorway. <clears throat> this friend of mine doing this little dance to that song that was like this, like a saw, because it was like a, like a clear cutting anthem <laughs> or something anyway that's one thing that always comes to mind when I play that one um, what's next bees oh <clears throat> these little lights you can't really see them because of the picture quality they just look like little tiny lights behind me but they're actually bees if you could see them up close I don't think there's a way to make that happen anyway they're courtesy of my friend Springer who sent them to me a while ago for this exact live stream because it was supposed to happen so long ago. I think this was first supposed to happen last spring and then I uh, had vocal troubles and then it was supposed to happen last month and that got canceled. So anyway, it's been a long time, but Springer, thank you for the bee lights. They're putting me right in the mood. <clears throat> let's see, maybe let's have Bruno play bees. Let's see how that goes. This guitar is named Bruno. And I wrote a lot of this record on this guy and um, also recorded a bunch of it on Bruno. And Bruno has new strings. And we'll see how he does with that. It's not his favorite, I'll tell you that much. But anyway, he it's he's pretty. And if we only get through one song with Bruno, at least we got to meet him. 
This guitar was given to me by my friend Goody. Given is not the right word. <laughs> I would say Bruno was surrendered to me by Goody. After I, every single time I went to his house for like a year, I would take him and bring him home. I don't know. I mean, Bruno's a Bruno. That's why he's called Bruno. That's his brand. That's his uh, maker. And it's probably a 19, you know, maybe 40s uh, Hawaiian style guitar. It's very special. Anyway, I just kept stealing him until finally Goody gave up and just, it was like a, uh, yeah, I just wore him down. Try bees on Bruno. Well, our dreams are full of bees, they're full of bees, they're full of buzzing bees. When we gonna wake in, honey? We're on our knees, on our knees. We're on our bended knees. When we gonna stand up, right? funny to think about <clears throat> that song which so much of that is about dealing with uh, hectic hectic pre-covid life <clears throat> now 
we got all different problems. <coughs> oh, picks are right here. Thanks, nice people. Thank you. It really, you know, I remember, um, <laughs> someone's worried about the guitar catching on fire. It's fine. It's not as close as it looks. Uh, <clears throat> I remember the first time I played a live stream, which was uh, March 12th, 2020, maybe 13th. And I remember feeling like there's, it, it was sort of a desperation move because I had, it was the day that everything happened and I had canceled the show. And, um, but I just felt like this is not, okay, we'll do this, but it's not gonna feel like anything. And then still every time I do one of these, to be completely honest, all day I'm setting up and I'm like, this isn't gonna, why Why would any of us do this? But then it feels like something because you guys show up and you say your little things that you say. So thank you for making it feel like something. It's really nice to connect. Uh, the next song is We Deliver and I don't play this one very often either, um, partly because I miss Anders every time I play it because he plays this cool guitar solo and it's kind of short and feels a little incomplete to me without it. Um, but not really, it's fine, it's just still a song. <coughs> I'm sorry about all the coughing. I had bronchitis for like three weeks. I'm almost better. Uh, for a second, I thought I was going to have to cancel this again. I was just like, it's not, no, we, that's not possible. But I'm fine. I'm just going to cough in your ear occasionally. We deliver.
Did that get too loud? <clears throat> I might play this little guy for this for this song. Can you hear this guy? Hey Brian Dozer. Dozer recorded my first album, which came out cassette only in 1996. I think it was the last album to come out on cassette only in the world. Um, all right, here's this guitar. This is the bass date. <clears throat> this guitar was made in Boston in 1897 or something. No, it wasn't even Appetite, Brian. It was um, Swim For It. A little cassette uh, that came out in 1996, and the cover was not, a, was not good. <laughs> it sort of looked like a Rasta sort of... I'm not even going to describe it, but it wasn't good. Anyway, the last known... I thought the last copies that I had, I had like 20 left and they were in a wooden box in the backseat of my car and it was when I was still living in Somerville, Mass. And then there was a giant flood and my car flooded, but I didn't get back to it for a couple of days. And then by the time I got back to it, there was um, just like hot, disgusting flood water in my car up to the bottom of the doors, like, you know, eight inches or so in the car. And my box of tapes was afloat on the sea of disgustingness in the car and when I opened it up it had this gray very beautiful luxurious gray mold uh, like inch long fur of gray mold on the tapes and that was the end of those tapes as far as I knew but then I told the story one time at a show or somewhere and um, then somebody mailed me a copy of the tape so now I do I have one and I do have several tape players but I'm not going to listen to it. <laughs> I remember that somebody played a cheese grater. That was an instrument that figured largely on that album. <clears throat> Why did we start talking? Oh, because Brian. <clears throat> All right, so here, the next song is Little Frame. Um, this song, the reason that I wrote the song or the where it came from was that I went to a college reunion, which I don't necessarily do very much uh, but I've been to a few now, and this one I only went to because I was uh, on a, like a panel of alumni in the arts or whatever, and so I was doing that, and uh, that's what made me go, and then I was so glad that I went because I connected with a bunch of people, including an old art um, professor of mine, and we had, we sort of actually blew off most of the reunion and had this big uh, dinner at his house, and he told this story that... I loved so much about um, when he was in, uh, I guess he had graduated from college and he was trying to get into grad school, art school. And um, he got an interview at, I don't know, somewhere in Seattle. He was living in, in New Haven, Connecticut, and he got an uh, interview at somewhere in Seattle. But he was... Uh, an art student and he was broke and that he had no way of getting to Seattle. He couldn't afford a plane. He could, he didn't have a car. He couldn't afford the train. Uh, and even the bus, he, there was, he couldn't get there. But then luckily, um, he found out that there was, that Amtrak was running a deal where you could, for something like a hundred dollars, you could ride, uh, you could get like a week pass. It probably wasn't a hundred dollars, but it was something really small enough that he could afford it. So basically he could ride unlimited for a week and he timed it out. And basically a week was just enough to get from New Haven to Seattle, do the interview and then get back on the train and get back um, to New Haven before the 
has right now. So that's that is the beginning of the song is that story. And so and it he I guess at the time he was um, making very tiny little paintings. And so he got a um, tiny suitcase, like a little sort of makeup Barbie suitcase, and he filled it with all his tiny paintings because he was supposed to show 12 uh, examples of his of his work. And so he put 12 tiny paintings in a little Barbie suitcase. And then he got uh, he had like a couple sandwiches or whatever. And he had a copy of Shogun, the book Shogun, because it was the longest book he could find. And he got on the train and he rode three days to um, Seattle. And he got there, and he went to his interview, and he walked in there, and I always picture it like the scene in Flash Dance where she's going into the fancy uh, dance school judges, um, but it probably wasn't quite like that. But anyway, he went into his interview, and he opened his little suitcase, and he showed them his little tiny paintings, and they uh, laughed at him, and he had to pack up his little tiny paintings and run back to catch the train and ride all the way back home having been laughed out of his interview and he had to read Shogun again because it was all he had. Anyway, it was such, there's so much in that story and it's so much about um, having about like revealing yourself to someone and taking the risk of asking to be loved in one way or another that's what it meant to me so or or the taking the risk of being seen and so that's kind of what this uh song ended up being about <clears throat> The other thing about Steve is that he collects weird zithers, and he gave me a zither. I should have gotten that out for show and tell, but it's I can't do that now. Anyway, uh, he gave me a zither on this weekend. Um, it is a Hawaiian. It's a crazy instrument. Uh, it's like a. It's got a slide bar. I forget what it's called right now. Anyway, it's he gave me this kooky instrument, and so I wrote the song actually on that instrument, and then eventually transferred it to guitar. A little trivia for you. Say where I would be if you hadn't said all my names, all my names. Who can say where I would be if you hadn't back the way I came? I was 81 hours on the train just to show you. Show you what I was 81 hours on the train just to show you what's inside. 
what's inside my little Tremolola, thank you. <coughs> I don't know if it's exactly 81 hours, but that's the closest number that felt good to sing. It's close enough. I did do the math back in the day when I was writing it. The recording of that one's really pretty. Mark Spencer played amazing piano. What do we got now? <clears throat> Bright green world. Mm. This one's kind of a mom song. This may have been one of the first songs I wrote about being a Mom, of course, it's about more and other things because that's how I do it, but <clears throat> it's a lot about that. I figured out once we had already recorded this that I a little bit stole this from Anders, actually, uh, but not so bad. I told him he's okay with that. But he has a song that sounds a lot like this, but it's slower. <coughs> it's okay. It's not theft. It's uh. Mm -hmm. All that you have, all that you don't It takes all that you have, all that you don't I saw you coming for a long, long time I saw you coming
for taking care of some business for me. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, somewhere at the top is the tips links if you guys want to. It's, it's too hard to deal with them. If you guys want to reprint them, that is helpful if you want to do that every now and then. Uh, what was I just going to say about that one? Oh, I, that actually started from a dream. I remember I had a dream of the last verse is uh, I had a dream that where you could kind of open people's hearts up like a drawer almost and see what was in there. And I can't remember who I can't remember what. Anyway, I opened one up of somebody which I can't remember, and it was this crazy beautiful field, like a field of like rye grass or something. Anyway, I just remembered that while I was singing it. <coughs> That's kind of about parenthood, but it could also be about surviving two years of pandemic. Because all that you have and all that you don't. Now we have a very short song called Temporary Sun. Uh, I tried to make this one longer. I really wanted it to get longer, and I just wouldn't do it. Just flat refused. So it's a short song. It's about a minute and a half. Sometimes those are handy. I don't believe in putting in lines just because you think they should be there taking up space. If there's not a reason to have something to say, then you just might as well leave it a short song. Anyway, Temporary Sun. This one was fun because Mark Spencer got to shred briefly on the guitar. He didn't play too much electric guitar on this record, but um, he's amazing at it. And this is sort of a Sunvolty song. He plays in Sunvolt. So he gave it a little of the old Sunvolt shred -a Uh Okay. Let's see if this one's in there. Hmm. fun it would be fun to play it longer but oh well Next up, we got a few more. This one's called How Should Buy. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> what can you say about this one? It's kind of a song about the past and how uh, you can't go back there. <clears throat> there was a time I sang to you There was a time you were singing to And every word that we sang was true come down in Union Square Sparrows fly through the dirty air And I could look for you anywhere You're not there You're not there So hush a -bye, hush a -bye. hush a -bye, hush a -bye. hush a -bye. Making all our days by hand Regular folks didn't understand With the pie in the sky and the lines in the sand Long past the curtain call Devotion and doubt and the wrecking ball And all of that sound time I sang to you There was a time you were singing to And every word that we sang was true Um, ooh, there's only a couple left. It goes very fast when you just play the thing. <clears throat> Who wants to play this song? You should probably do it. Then. I'm going to tune Bruno down because... I'm super high when I sing it regular. And in the studio, I tune down a whole step. I think that would be too much of a shock for Bruno. Because he 
has brand new strings. This is already not very kind to do to you, Bruno. I'm sorry. Um, this next song is called My Ohio. about uh, it's a song I wrote for a friend of mine Roger who um, was my boss and uh, at, at a, at a um, environmental ed center that I worked in Truro for a year teaching fifth graders and uh, I know it's hard Anyway, <clears throat> uh, I met Roger on our job interview, which consisted of like a two hour hike. And by the end of it, we were friends forever. Also, I got the job. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is a song that I wrote uh, for him after he died. Uh, just thinking about him and growing up uh, in Ohio, small town Ohio, um, hard place for a gay kid to grow up, and he eventually made his way out to the Cape, and that was his forever home. Anyway, I loved him. This is a song for him. Yeah, you guys can sing along. No one can hear you. It's perfect if you're a, if you're a uh, scared singer alonger. COVID is your moment. <clears throat> you just sing the part that goes, my Ohio, my Ohio. You'll be fine. Or honestly, sing whatever the hell you want because no one else can hear you. It was kind of like I'd known you before The windy day we met by the shore And we didn't really have to talk at all You had just put your lover into the ground And I was just a little storm spinning around And we walked along My Ohio, you were born among the fields and the cranes, grew up knowing all of the names of the flowers by your grandma's bar, kissing cousins and an eye for the boys, willows waved and made a beautiful noise. You shook your wings and flew right to the dawn. My Ohio, my Ohio, my Ohio, green and blue, green like the
wish I could show you my little girl. She opens up so wide to the world. And I know that you'd see eye to eye. And I guess you called her down from the sky. The windy day that we said goodbye. And she fluttered. Like a songbird to your hand My Ohio My Ohio My Ohio Green and blue My Ohio I never knew just what a friend was for I swear to God, I saw him cross your eyes, my Ohio, my Ohio, my Ohio, green and choose to believe that you all sang well. Oh my god, you guys. Well, there's one more song. <clears throat> and um, thank you for being here. Oh my god. It's really nice. It's been such a weird winter, hasn't it? It's been freaking weird. And uh, so it's nice to just have a little moment with you guys, and I hope that I'm going to see some of you in person really soon. There's a few shows coming up um, this spring. Uh, not a ton yet, but a few, so hopefully I'll get to see some of you guys, and we'll keep um, expanding hours over the next year. Um, yeah, this has been the Blood Test album. I really I loved making this one so much. I wrote about it this week, and some of you probably saw that, but... It was an important one for me, just, it was like a re-entry uh, <laughs> into my life, and um, at least this part of my life, and uh, so, yeah, all these beautiful people that I made it with, Anders Parker, Conrad Meissner, Mark Spencer, um, Andy Tao, Brooklyn Recording, uh, Don Piper, Ben Tuesley, who made the art, Signature Sounds, who put it out, um, yeah, just a whole big, big lovely crew that made it happen and it's been fun to revisit it and I guess there's the wild left and maybe I'll do that next week maybe I'll rope in uh, Jeffrey since he was part of that one and maybe after March we will not have quite as much of a need for live streams anymore we'll see <coughs> uh, so hang in there and thank you for being here and um, I'll leave you with this one it's the last song uh, on the album it is called Lighthouse <clears throat> oh this one I definitely did write about being a parent and um, as I have said on stage sometimes I finished it played it for Jeffrey songwriter professional songwriter husband Jeffrey and he said uh, that's a nice song is it about being dead which it's not but then again who am I to say maybe it is anyway um yeah, it's certainly about parenthood and it's also about looking after each other and that is the name of the game still and always. So uh, keep yourself safe out there. Nice to see you in the in the chat box and um, yeah, I'll see you out there. The harbor to the ocean The ripples to the 
harbor to the ocean and the ripples to the waves Clouds roll in to your pretty sky. The winds get rough, my baby. The seas get high. Put your eye on the horizon at the edge of the blue. There's a shining in the darkness, gonna guide you safely through. Cause I'm living in. Thank you guys thank you so much for being here it's been a true pleasure who would have known that such a thing was possible thank you for sharing a moment and uh we'll see you somewhere here there somewhere stay safe thanks guys <laughs>